some of the most common advice given to players is completely wrong. I'm going to debunk some of these myths and tell you how to do it the right way in your swing. By far the two most common myths in the golf swing is to keep your head down and still and worry about keeping your left arm straight. Players that do that, you'll see them on the driving range, they'll keep their head still and they'll swing and it's not very athletic. It's wrong to keep your head still. What's important to keep still is the top of your spine. So if I keep my head still, if you can imagine right here is where the top of my spine is. If I keep my head still and I turn, the top of my spine goes towards the target. And once it's in front of the ball then, and I come forward, I'm always going to have the club face open and I'm in effect moving the ball too far back in my stance. What stays still when I pivot is the top of my spine. So my head, you'll see, will rotate with my shoulders. It doesn't keep still. And so the biggest myth in golf is keeping your head down and your eye on the ball. Learn to keep the top of your fine spine still and you'll be a lot better off. The other thing, common myth, I call them old wives tales, um, is keeping your left arm straight for a right-handed player. It's half right. That's the problem with it. It's only half right. So on my backswing for a right-handed player, my left arm is the radius for this swing. And it should, you should try to keep it as straight as possible. So the backswing and the downswing, that is correct. But what happens is everybody tries so hard to keep this left arm straight that they keep it straight on the follow through. And because of that, then the club has no way to release correctly and ever to be squared up. So my left arm's the radius on the backswing and to impact, but then my right arm is the radius for the swing on my follow through. So my left arm's straight going back but my left arm folds on this way through and my right arm stays pretty straight. And so if you look at it from this angle here, so as I come through, my left arm's gonna fold and stay close to me. If it stays straight, then this club face, I'm gonna, for most players, gonna end up at this position. Most slicers are trying to keep their head down and their left arm straight and it's the worst advice in golf. Another common myth that you'll hear all the time is that the swing's the same no matter what club you use. And that's incorrect. There's some parts that are the same, but the clubs are all made different. If you've seen some of my previous videos, we talk about driver's much longer shaft, much flatter shaft angle. Sand wedge is shorter and a steeper shaft angle. So therefore, the swing is not the same with every club. Our tempo ought to be the same, how we hold the club ought to be the same, but our ball position's different, our distance away from the ball's different, and our, the plane, the shaft angle that the club swings on is different. Much more up and down for shorter clubs, much more around for driver. So, a big myth, swing the same no matter what club, it's wrong. You'll have one club in your bag that's your favorite, but you'll hate all the other ones. Another myth that I see, if you call it a myth, is people trying to create width in the golf swing. Width is important. The wider or the bigger our arc is in the swing, the more club head speed we can generate. It's just physics. An object that moves farther in the same amount of time has to move faster. And so if my swing circle of an arc is wider and long and deeper, I'm going to have more club head speed. So width in the golf swing is really important. But the way you achieve it is 
has been a myth. And what most people try to do is they get set up and they think that the more they go this way on the backswing, that they'll have a wider arc and a wider swing. And at the beginning of the backswing, they probably do. You can see how far away this club head is from my hands. But at some point, this club's got to go the other direction. And so what happens to most players that are like this on their backswing is that their arms lift and their elbows fold like this. Now they have no width at all, and as they come down, they've actually narrowed their swing way too much. The way to get the correct amount of width is hinging your hands correctly and early enough. So by the time my lead arm, my left arm for a right-handed player is parallel to the ground, I should already have a wrist hinge like this, 90 degrees. I make an L with this club shaft in my arm. And so from this position, I can turn, and now I still have width with my arms and away from my chest. And I've used my wrist hinge to get the club back to the top of my backswing rather than lifting my arms and bending my elbows. So if you're trying to go this way on the backswing to generate more width, that's a mistake. Another myth or misconception that I see that I talk about a lot, and we've mentioned it briefly in a couple other videos, is um, keeping your eye on the ball. Um, the ball's not our target. For all you new players out there, beginners, intermediates, somebody that's not broke 100 yet for 18 holes, the ball is not your target. Where you want your ball to land is the target. If we have a three-foot putt, the target is the hole. It's not the ball. If I have driver, the target is the fairway, however far I can hit driver. And so the ball is not our target. So therefore, we do not need to stare at the ball. I find too many people that are told to stare at a dimple and make sure you're watching the ball. If we swing correctly and our swing bottoms out correctly, the ball just gets in the way. And that's crucial for new players and for high handicap players Learn to make a swinging motion and learn to let the ball get in the way and you'll be a much better player. Maybe not a myth, but more of a misconception. And for better players, kind of one of my pet peeves with golf instruction in the last 10 or 15 years is people purposely trying to get people to bow their left wrist for a right-handed player on the backswing. There's many great players on the PGA Tour. Dustin Johnson comes to mind. John Rahm comes to mind. Colin Morikawa comes to mind um, that do have a wrist in that position. Uh, Sergio Garcia would be another one. Um, but predominantly, most players don't. And I contend that they, those guys play good in spite of that position, not because of it. And here's what I mean. If you really think about the golf swing in simple terms, we're trying to swing on a certain circle, a cert certain plane around us, and we would like to keep the club face square to that path. And if you do that, I got a question on my flashlight drill just this week. The guy said, you know, I notice when I swing your flashlight stick that my wrist is slightly cupped when it's up here at the top of my backswing. Well, for the way he's holding the club, that means that angle he has in his wrist is correct. It means that club face is square to that path. Okay? So, some players, if they have very weak top hands, very weak left hands for a right-handed player, and they keep the club square, this wrist does stay flat and get pretty bowed. But for players that hold the club more in their fingers, and they have a much stronger, what would be termed a stronger grip, 
when that club face hinges and it's square, you will see there'll be a cupped wrist. My opinion, nobody's ever disclosed what Ben Hogan's secret is, but I believe Ben Hogan's secret was that he figured out for him at the top of his backswing that his left wrist should be in this position and therefore his club face was square. If you look at some of Ben Hogan's swings in his younger days when he was a hooker um, and really not a very good player, his wrist was in this position and this club face pointed up in the air and it was closed. And because of that position, he hit hooks. Most of the players you'll see on tour that play from this bowed position, they all hit fades. Dustin Johnson, John Rahm, Corn Malkauer prefers to hit a fade if he's playing good. And they get these hands in this position, and then they can hold this angle down here at the bottom and just turn so they're not releasing their hands. They have a de-lofted club with a lot of forward lean. They can hit it a mile that way. Um, and they've learned how to play from that position. I find that most players can't play from a closed club face position. They can't play from an open one either. So neither one's good. If I had my preference, would I like to see a guy closed rather than open? Yes. But if you're really serious about playing better golf, you want to do things correctly. Swing on the correct path, keep the club face square to that path, and you'll be more consistent. I'll probably get a lot of comments talking about this next myth or misconception in golf swing, uh, because there's a lot of debate and a lot of arguments on both sides of the fence on this topic. But for years and years and years, players have been taught and told that with their irons, they should hit down on the ball. In my opinion, that's incorrect. However, I teach a lot with track men, and I think angle of attack is very important with irons. And I want an angle of attack that's minus, which means the club head is descending at impact. I'm not hitting down on the ball though, and that's what I want to help you clarify and help you understand. The swing is not the same with every club. We've mentioned that earlier. Let me show you a couple things. I'll do it with a lob wedge and a six iron to show you the difference. If I sole a 60 degree wedge flat, can you tell how much more forward this end of the club is than the leading edge of the club? That is 60 degrees aloft. That is the impact position I need to be in on a full swing to hit this club correctly. All right? My six iron, if I sole it flat and I put it like this, a lot less loft, um, but that is the impact position I need to be at impact with a six iron. Not like this, like I was with a 60 degree wedge. I would run out aloft. I wouldn't get it airborne. But not like this either, that most high handicappers' position is at impact as they try to make the ball go up in the air. So understand that the forward lean with every club is different. So. Do we hit down on the ball with irons? Well, no, we don't hit down with our swinging motion. And so my body should still rotate pretty level through the swing, and my swing should be a circle. With a lofted club that has a lot of forward lean, this club is much shorter this handles closer to the ground in this position than it would be if I was like this. So what happens is after I strike the ball with forward lean with the club, this club is going to lengthen to get to its full length. That would make the head of the, cir the circle continue to swing down the arc, but I'm still not trying 
to hit down on it. So what I see with most people interpret that is they're making motions with their body and their arms to make the club go down to the ball. And we're not trying to do that at all. We're trying to swing in a circle around us. And if I have the correct forward lean, then my club will bottom out in front of the ball. And that's what angle of attack means on TrackMan or other launch monitors. It tells you how far in front of the ball we are bottoming out. For advanced players, with the wedges, I like to bottom out 9 or 10 or 11 inches in front of the ball, so an attack angle of 9 or 10. With a 6 iron, I only like to bottom out maybe minus 1 or minus 2 on attack angle, so I'm just bottoming out an inch or two in front of the ball. By the time I get to a fairway wood, I would like my attack angle to be zero. And so where I'm not hitting behind it or in front of it. And for most instructors would tell you with driver, we would like to bottom out behind the ball two or three or four or five inches and therefore hitting it on the upswing. That's a good point through all of this. If I grab my driver really quick, I showed you my 60 degree wedge had forward shaft lean. Well, if I saw with this driver flat, my handle's behind the face of the club. So that's why we play driver forward in our stance. I like this end to always still point at my belt buckle at a dress. And so that's my impact position with driver. This pointing at my belt buckle with the ball forward, that's how I'm going to ensure a positive angle of attack. While we're on the subject here of myths and misconceptions in the golf swing, if you know of some that we haven't mentioned and you'd like to hear about, just shoot us a comment and we'll be glad to address it in a future video. I mentioned earlier about keeping your head still is a bad idea. Keeping anything still in the golf swing is a bad idea other than the top of your spine. So we. We need, our, our, we need to have footwork in the golf swing. We need to be athletic. Yes, golf's a sport, so be an athlete. So back swing's going to go into my back leg, back hip. Forward swing's going into my front hip. And this foot should come up off the ground as I finish. So do not keep your feet still. For some of you better players that tend to hook the ball, one of the most common reasons I see that good players hook it is they're too flat-footed on their swing and these feet are anchored on the ground, therefore their hips and their shoulders can't turn forward as they swing and their arms flip over. So be natural. Look, if you have any questions, the number one player in the world these days is Scotty Scheffler. Uh, just watch his swing and, and look at his feet. And that should answer any questions that you have.